Hello all, welcome back. My name is GK. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up WordPress on a serverless service like App Engine Standard. The concept remains same if you're using any other serverless service. If you're not aware of WordPress, it's a very famous blogging software that is most commonly used to create blogs. And you might have seen a lot of uh, news websites or agencies. They use this software in, in a lot of companies as well. They use this software to create their websites. So it's a PHP based application and usually WordPress is hosted in a VM and there is a very good reason for that. We're going to cover that in this video as well. So what we're going to cover in this video is understanding WordPress high level structure. This is important because whenever you're trying to set up WordPress on an app engine or any other platform, uh, it's better to understand the file structure and what is stored on the disk and what is stored in the database so that you can be prepared as an architect whether to use a serverless or whether to use a VM or some other service. And then installing WordPress on App Engine. I'm going to show you a step by step procedure of that in a demo. And most importantly, the pros and cons of this design. So with that, let's look into the file structure of WordPress. WordPress has two file structures. One, you store the files in a local file system. And then you also store the important information in the database. Now we're going to talk about these two. So in the local file system, you have WP admin includes and content. So all your themes, you know, plugin content or images and all those things are stored on a file system. So that's why for WordPress persistent storage is very important. And like I was saying before, that's the main reason why WordPress is commonly used in a VM rather than installing WordPress in a serverless service. The reason for that is serverless is mostly preferred for stateless applications where you do not maintain any state uh, because of its dynamic nature. When you scale in or scale out, you have new micro VMs or lambdas coming up and going down. So you, you should not maintain any state in that. So that's why WordPress is not ideally suitable for serverless architecture. And in the database, you have the post and the comments, like whatever you write, in the blog uh, or any content that you put that is actually stored in the database and the comments are as well are stored in the database this is the important part to understand as a workaround whenever we are using wordpress in an app engine as we need to have a persistent storage we're going to use cloud storage but again i don't think cloud storage will be performing as good as your block storage because cloud is cloud storage is more for blobs it's not suitable for production and sort of environment but still you can at least use that and store your content on that stuff and database most commonly mysql so we're going to use cloud sql here and the architecture is pretty simple you have your php uh, application running the wordpress application running inside app engine and then it is going to talk to mysql to insert and do all the CRUD operations. And then if there is any plugins or any images, then we're going to use cloud storage. So with that, let's dive into the demo. And then after the demo, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons, why this design pattern is not suitable for WordPress or why this can be suitable for WordPress. So as always, start with your project. After you open the console, select your project and then go to the App Engine. If you had a previous version of App Engine, you're going to overwrite with that version because you can only have one application per project with app engine so in my case it's currently disabled so i'm gonna enable that all right so this is done now as far as documentation is concerned it's well documented in uh, the google cloud documentation how to set up wordpress in app engine i'm gonna paste this link in the description so you don't have to worry about remembering the commands when i'm following this document you can click on Activate Cloud Shell here. It's going to open the below terminal in the tab, but I would prefer opening it in a new window. Close this and I have it in a new window. So now the next thing is always set your quick set project to the current project where we're going to install this. Authorize. Perfect. So you can follow this tutorial either from your uh, from your Linux environment if you have G Cloud set up there, or you can just use Cloud Shell. Steps are similar for both. In the first part, we're gonna create MySQL instance, 
and then we're going to create a WordPress database. If you're new to the Cloud SQL, I would recommend watching my video on how to use App Engine and Cloud SQL. You will see the link on the top. So this step might take some time. I'm going to pause this video and once the instance is created, I'll resume the video back. All right, so now we have our first instance. Then I'm going to create a WordPress database. So the WordPress database is also created. The next step is to change the password of the root user. Again, in this tutorial, I'm going to use root user, but I highly recommend not using that. I would rather create a WordPress user or something and then give permissions to the database. And again, if you do not know that part, please go back to my previous video and watch that as well. Uh, but I recommend if you're using this in a production like environment, try to use a different user, not root. So I have created the root user and then this database, I mean, this instance is in US central one. This is important to remember in the next steps. So, so the next thing is getting the WordPress project for the app engine. So we need to get the WordPress project uh, from the Google cloud tools, which was set up, which was set up before. So for that, we're going to use composer. The composer is already installed in the cloud shell you don't have to worry about that if you're not aware of composer it's more like an npm and it's a dependency manager i'm going to run this command once that is done you have to install php in your cloud shell because we have to run certain commands using php and execute php files so that is important We have to run this WP GAE and after it is done, after the composer is done getting all the files, you will see a vendor folder here. That's where we're going to run this. So once this is done, the next step is to create a new WordPress project for that. This is the command. And the WordPress project is going to be my WordPress project. Leave it as default. You don't want to change that yes so us central one is what we have to choose where we have our database instance the project id is something that i'm going to get from here enter database instance and the name is wordpress This is also WordPress. Uh, DB user default. DB user defaults to root. The password is here. Okay, so the WordPress project is ready. So basically, what's happening here is it is trying to set up the WP config where your information is stored in a configuration file of a WordPress. But again, you don't have to worry about uh wordpress or all those files but i'm assuming that if you're watching this video you came here to understand how to use wordpress with app engine so you might be aware of all those files and stuff okay so the next step is go to the directory the wordpress directory and then finally deploy the application and you see here app.yaml which is already constructed and then cron.yaml the reason why cron.yaml is important here is because wordpress as a cron job that is set for about 15 minutes uh, which periodically goes and checks for the updates for your themes and plugins and all those things and for your uh, wordpress to work in app engine uh, app engine supports cron so you have to install both rather deploy both so gcloud app deploy app.yaml and cron.yaml yep Again, this might take a while. I'm going to pause this video and resume once this is done. All right, so the setup is done. It has uploaded all the files. I had some issue with the cloud scheduler before. So if you are using on a new project, then I recommend enabling the cloud scheduler API before you ins you deploy the application in the app engine. So that threw me an error and then I enabled it back and then I redeployed the application. So make sure of that 
before you deploy the application okay so now let's try to open this and see if i see the wordpress up and running okay this is perfect i see wordpress installed and it is asking me to enter a few details master gk something like that admin user and then store this password somewhere be here and email install wordpress okay so this is installed um, not now login admin user and then the password is okay so now you have wordpress installed now if i go to a plugin section right and if i try to install or update a new plugin you, you will immediately see that you know this host is not set up with the ftp username and password basically what's happening here is the wp content as i was discussing before uh, that folder is sort of a read only in app engine you know you cannot write new plugins or install new plugins or update new plugins so for that to work uh, you have to again do some local development or first update the plugins in your wp project folder in google cloud in in cloud shell and then you redeploy and the same applies to the media as well let's say if i want to you know apply something here you know like this image so i would immediately get an error because you cannot write to the parent directory as it is not writable it's more it's a read only so for these to work you have to make some changes and give some permissions and enable your cloud storage plugin in the wordpress so that way you can uh, upload your files to the cloud storage so for that now what we have to do is we have to look out for this cloud storage bucket let's go back to the project here and then go to cloud storage again this step is also very well documented in the documentation here so you don't have to worry about that okay so this is the app engine uh, cloud storage bucket just wanted to make sure if this is correct that's right now i'm going to run this command to set the proper permissions we made it public and now if you go to the dashboard i'm sorry here uh, here plugins and activate and once it once it is activated go to the settings and here we have to give the bucket name which is this one save settings okay so now we have enabled the bucket name there and go to the media again add new select some image that's it so now you can see that the image is uploaded and now if i go back to the cloud storage if i click on the bucket here uh, you should see somewhere here you know the image is going to be saved so that's pretty much it and that's how you can manage your media and you can upload your posts and do all that stuff but to manage plugins and themes and other stuff you have to uh, locally install them and then redeploy the application redeploy the software to app engine more sort of a CICD way maybe if you want to call it that way and then get it up and running okay so now let's go to my slides and let's understand the pros and cons of this design so if you look at the pros of this design it's easy on pocket meaning let's say you want to set up your own wordpress site you know for your company uh, you just have to install it in app engine and then if there is no traffic you're not going to pay anything because it's serverless 
you don't have to manage people or you don't have to have any support resources managing that and it's infinitely scalable when the traffic comes in you can scale as much as much as you can you can have v1s and v2s and all sorts of canary deployments which i have covered about the app engine in my app engine videos and then it's also easy to maintain right uh, it's more like a no ops model and it's very fast to set up so these are some of the pros and the cons are the performance issues now i'm not sure whenever you are trying to use your images inside a storage bucket right uh, as opposed to using the images or wp content inside your uh, disk which has obviously a better performance when when compared to cloud storage but again if you want to try it out try it out and do some load testing before you want to enable this in production whenever you feel like you will have huge traffic for your site and there is operational overhead for this as well uh, because whenever you want to make changes to your themes or you want to install new plugins you have to redeploy the application every time you want to do that now some people might say like that's a good thing as well because you can versionize your application and then you can do cicds and stuff you can use a proper devops model for that but again uh, for people who are uh, using wordpress for a long time and who are maintaining or installing wordpress in the hosting websites they would prefer it to be updated very fast from the admin section which you cannot do it in the app engine case and the reason why i put it as not suitable for production workloads is obviously because of the first two points that i have mentioned because of the performance impacts uh, which we do not know and and also because you know it's it's tough to manage whenever we are we are having some issues so these are pros and cons which i thought are important to discuss again if i missed anything let me know here if you or if you feel like there are, there are more advantages please feel free to comment you can always disagree with me on this topic uh, that's all for this video uh, thank you so much for watching and give it a try and install your first wordpress using app engine and see for yourself how that is performing thank you all bye